everybody. Erica here from Pink Buckaroo Designs. Welcome. For those of you watching the replay, thank you for joining us. I'm going to do a few little technological things here at the beginning. I like to share this over on my business page so that I can be seen in both places. Hello, ladies. Thanks for joining me. Um, let's see. You guys are getting a view of my, my office today. It's kind of messy and I can, oh, I don't know. I don't like showing you guys my mess, but I just, you know, I'm sure y'all's craft area are just as messy, right? All right. So I've shared it and now let me see. I'm going to pull it up on my iPad so I can see your comments, hopefully. My daughter has been using my iPad quite a bit to play this new game called Fortnite, I think. I'm not sure about this game. I don't know, you guys, you guys have kids playing this game? Suddenly, it's the thing, and it includes guns, so I don't know, I don't know. Her daddy's been playing it too with her, and he assures me it's not bad, but we know how that goes. <laughs> oh, I'm seeing you guys. Hi, Christine, hi, Gloria, hi, Rachel. Hi, Ellie. That's my daughter's name, Ellie. I love that name. All right, so I think we've got everything set up. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to switch the camera around in just a minute to show you guys that giant box. I don't know if you saw it sitting there on my floor. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit what I'm going to do with all that stuff here in a minute. But I, um, while we wait for everybody to jump in, I thought I would share some swaps that I got this week. My team does a swap um, once a month and they are spectacular. Like our team swaps are some of the best swaps that I've ever gotten. So I have to share um, some of them. We had several groups. I was only in two of the groups, so I actually don't have all of them. Um, our theme this month was, see if I can remember, spring, anything spring related. We try to keep our swap themes kind of vague and open-ended so that it's not um, too hard that people might not be able to participate if they didn't have something specific. So springtime cards. All right, so this one is from Anne-Marie. I know you're on here, Anne-Marie. I saw you, hi. So this is Anne-Marie's card and it looks like a normal card until you open it and it's a gift card holder. I told her that I would be casing this and I'm sure I'll do it on a Facebook Friday to show you guys. That's so awesome, because I'm always thinking of ways to include a gift card in a regular card. So, very cute, Amory. This was, I don't remember everybody's, but I'll just tell you the ones that I do remember. This is Kara's. We all love the way she used the negative image of this butterfly, and this is what we're using today on our projects. So she and I were on the same wavelength. Here is, I think, Renee's, an oldie but goodie that tree that has the four seasons. Always love that one. Here's one Tiffany did and has the little baby pies. Remember when we made the pie on Facebook Friday? She made little baby ones and they go with the apron. So cute. Here is Heather's, I believe, and it's a fancy fold. And you open it like that. You guys see like that? Very pretty. And there's the butterfly. This butterfly, I believe is sold out. I was going to use both sets of the butterfly framelits today and I last night after I have everything typed and prepared saw that this set has already sold out. That's the way it goes during the retirement season. So um, anyways we're gonna make it work today don't worry. This is a fun one. This is that card that moves. Can you guys see how it's fluttering? This is crystals. This is a really uh, tricky set to use. Um, I've played with it and it's not easy and she did a really good job and she put it in the mini treat bag which I thought was cute. Here's one. Look at this. This is really beautiful. It's beautiful when you guys are looking at it but when you look at it in person it is just almost it takes your breath away. All of these are embossed. Crystal. No Cheryl. Cheryl did this. So pretty. Here's one from Terry. I like how she did that trim right there. We're all using up our retiring paper. I, I like that paper, that's that daisy paper that Terry used, and I think it actually is already sold out. Here is, oh, I can't remember, I can't remember, but it's cute, and it's that set you guys are requesting that I use. Lots of die cuts. 
Lots of die cuts. Oh, Connie, is this yours? This is yours, isn't it? Now that I see you're popping up, I think that's yours. Here is one of mine. I used a little picnic basket, but I just stamped it all flat, except for this is cut out. See, that way you don't have to use all those framelits. Keeps it easy. Um, here is one. This is, um, help me. I can't remember whose was. Denise, this was Denise's. I like how she, there's that tree again. She stamped on that shape. I love it. Um, this was Gloria's monochromatic. I always love monochromatic. And there's that butterfly again. And you can see there's the stamped butterfly that we'll be doing in just a little while. And the, the framelit that is sold out. There's two butterfly sets in our catalog. One has sold out and one is still available. And here's Anne Marie's other card. It's fancy. It has a little belly band that slides off with some embossing. Isn't that cute? Thanks for joining me. I see you guys all jumping on. I'm just kind of killing some time here at the beginning before we really get started. Look how cute this is. Those little um, mermaids from the magical myths and magic, I think, or magical friends. Kira, this is Kira's. I loved how she did just that simple um, sponging there and then put those popped up. So cute. Um, now this is funny because I am actually working with a set. It is out right now on my work table. This was Heather's also. Um, this is gonna be one of my classes next month, this um, Zest, Lemon Zest set. It's a good one. I thought it was nice and summery. Here's one with a lot of awesome little intricate die cuts. Lots of die cutting. And then here's the fun um, bike. That bike is a lot of fun. I'm actually using this set in next month's All-Star Tutorial Bundle, so you have to be looking. And then this one, look at this. This is called a viewfinder. Remember the little things we did when we were little kids? She made it to spin, and this is, this is easy. I mean, this is not easy, and she did this as a swap, so very cool. All right, so I've killed enough time. Let me tell you what I'm gonna do. I am going to take the camera off this holder. I'm gonna flip it down so you guys can see the box. And then after I'm done with that, I'm gonna move the camera over here to my workspace. So there's gonna be a lot of moving around. I apologize ahead of time. There's really no easy way for me to do this so that it's like smooth. Maybe there is, but I'm not professional enough to know how to do it. I'm just gonna move the camera. So hopefully I don't end the video somehow. If I do end the video somehow, I'm just gonna start a new one, okay? All right, so let's try this. I'm gonna take you guys over here and show you this giant box of stuff. Ooh, I'm covering it up. Let's see, swing it around. Ah, here's the giant box of stuff. Now you might have recognized that this is all celebration stuff. All right, now I have so much extra celebration stuff. This is a full stamping up box full of celebration stuff. And it's not just this year's stuff, I have stuff from the past too, like, um, remember this? This I believe was last year. I have several of these and they're all brand new, unused. And um, when you place a lot of orders like I do, you end up with a lot of celebration stuff. All these embossing things, these kits, lots of stamp sets. Um, I have several of these, what were these called? Tutti Frutti envelopes and cards. So I really need to do something with all of this. Um, my space is very limited and I have so much of it. I would really rather just give it away. I don't want to sell it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload an album on Facebook with photos of each thing that I have. Look, there's Tasty Truck. Look, I have a bunch of those. I have a lot. I have ribbon. So I'm going to upload a, um, an album over on Facebook. And from now until the end of the month, at every $50 that you order in my store, you can pick something from here and I'll mail it to you. So I know some of you have placed your Facebook Friday orders already. So this is gonna be retroactive to from this past Tuesday on. If you've used the hostess code, which I'm gonna walk around over here and hook you guys up. I'm sorry for all the movement. But if you use this hostess code anytime in the next two, we uh, two weeks, guys, I hope I don't hang up on you. Just close your eyes and I'll tell you when it's over. If you place an order using this hostess code, 
then I'm gonna send you an email and ask you what you want for free out of that box. I've got some are multiples, like you saw. I think I have like five of those Tasty Truck stamp sets. And some are singles. So it's gonna be first come, first serve. When I'm done with the video today, I will upload all the photos that I have of the products that I have. And you can pick every $50 you spend with me um, from this past Tuesday till April 30th, you can choose something out of there for free. So um, there's that. That's what I'm gonna do for the next two weeks. Um, if you have questions about that, you can ask me, you can shoot me a message or an email. Um, and I hope that that goes smoothly because that's gonna be kind of, um, I don't know, it could be kind of confusing because some of it will probably disappear before, you know, like if I only have one and somebody chooses it and you wanted it, then it might, you know, it might be confusing, but we're gonna make the best of it. Ooh, sorry about that. I just gotta move this out of the way. All right, so free stuff. I'll ship it to you for free with your $50 orders between now and April 30th, okay? Okay, so let's get started. Um, today, we're gonna make these three projects with the watercolor wings set. And before we do that, I need to tell you guys a few things if you haven't joined um, Facebook Friday with me before. Um, not only am I gonna send you guys free celebration stuff, but if you spend $30, with me by Monday night, by this Monday night, using this hostess code, I'm gonna send you all three of these make and takes for free. I was gonna show you what that looks like. Here's one I did a couple of weeks ago. It comes in a bag like this, has all your make and take supplies, and a link to the video so you know how to make them. So for every for everybody who places a $30 order, you'll get these. If you bump it to 50, you're gonna get this and something from the celebration box. And if you spend 100, you get two things from the celebration box. I also have the free um, tutorial bundle with $50. So there's a lot of free stuff going on right now. And speaking of free, how about that clearance rack? Did you guys check it out? Stuff's not free, but it's almost free. It is so cheap. Okay, so there's that. Now I always give away prizes. Um. My workspace is quite a mess. Um, last week, I gave away, I was offering two stamp sets, and I have already emailed them. Your price list is going to Darlene, and Born to be Loved is Tina. So ladies, I believe I saw you have already responded back in my inbox with your addresses. Congratulations, I will get these out to you um, probably on Monday. I probably won't get to it until then. Um, I also asked kindly for you to share my video, and I went through and picked out two random winners for some of this cute um, tinsel trim. And Kathy West and Peggy Bell, you two were chosen, and I have your addresses already, so I'll be sending them. Kathy, there you are, right there. You're the winner. So good, I'm glad you enjoyed that clearance rack. I know, I did too. All right, so Peggy and Kathy, those are yours. Um, this week I have two bolts of ribbon to send out to two random winners who share the video. So if you would be so kind as to share this video, I would greatly appreciate it. And I will pick two winners randomly next week. All right, now the big prize is this week. You have to actually go over to my blog and enter, um, it's called a raffle copter. It's at the bottom of the post and it just asks your, your name, um, your address and all that. That way I can contact you. So two prizes. This is paper pumpkin that just came. And I have an extra one that I would like to give away. And this one is super cute for the summer. Um, it's very beachy, nautical themed. It includes an island indigo spot, oh, which is a retiring color. And a really good stamp set. I really like that anchor and the lighthouse. So that's one prize that you can win. And the other prize is a background stamp called Postscript. It's a good one. It looks kind of like stamped images. And you guys know how I love background stamps. So go over to my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com, and enter to win. And let me know which one you'd prefer. Like maybe you already have this one, or maybe you already have this one, or maybe you don't have either of them. And that way you can tell me you would 
you would appreciate either one. Okay, so the last thing I need to tell you before we actually start stamping are the project sheets. These I type up every week for you. Um, they're the three projects that we're making and it includes all the product information, the measurements that you need. Um, there are, here's the hostess code if you wanna order. Um, by Monday night to get these Megan takes my next class which deadline is next week bird banter and here's details on that PDF I was telling you about that you get for free with a $50 order so these uh, project sheets are free to you they're uploaded right now on my blog so hop over there pinkbuckaroo.com and either print or save it to your computer so you can know how to make these things all right oh and I have this set out too I don't know if you guys saw my blog post look I have Spiral bound my catalog. I ordered the spiral that was the closest to this color this year. It's kind of a navy color. And these will go to my Stamp Club to Go members. So if you are in my Stamp Club to Go, you'll get one of these next month. If you would like one of these, the only way you can get it is um, to join my Stamp Club to Go, and they get them for free. So uh, let me know if you're interested in that too. There's information on my blog about that. Otherwise, I'll be sending everybody a regular ca uh, catalog who has ordered with me in the last 12 months. All right, I think we're ready to go. Here are three projects. We are using the Watercolor Wings stamp set, which looks like this. When this one came out, it was so, so popular. It was several years ago. Goodness, I'm so thirsty. Um, and the framelits, this was the first time I remember that... Um, framelits like went on back order and became unorderable <laughs> that was like the first time we really experienced that and everybody went crazy because they were so popular so um that's what we're using today because it's retiring it's um sadly it's leaving okay so we're gonna do we're gonna save this one for last did you guys notice that i'm gonna do brush show today i'm very nervous very very nervous but hopefully it'll be all right all right, and then this one is a fun card that we'll do in a second. We're gonna start with a 3D item. And it looks like my little box needs a little extra adhesive right there. It keeps popping open. All right, so let's see if I can make some more space. I don't have very much space today. This box holds a little Debbie snack. Me and my snacks, you guys. And you know, usually little, little Debbie does not tempt me, but lemon flavored things tempt me greatly. And I eh, did open one just to taste it. And I just had a bite and that was it. And I will say that they are very good. So anyway, that goes in here. Um, that's why I decided to go with Daffodil Delight. If you're looking for these, Little Debbie, their website has a snack finder, which is silly. You can go over there, type in your zip code and what snack you're looking for, and it'll tell you what stores in your area have that snack, which is so funny to me. Okay, let's go ahead and make the box first. If I can just get all my stuff together. Good grief. I have about 100 projects going right now at one time, and I didn't get my Death Dale Delight. All right, so your card stock. Let's look on the page so I know what I'm doing. Your card stock to make the box is going to be five and a half by six and a half. And you're going to need your Simply Scored. And we're going to score the long side at one inch. These things, guys, ignore them. They were, they're for something else I'm working on. <laughs> I don't want to take them out. Somebody was asking me about these the other day. These come in your Simply Scored. And if you got to make sure you don't throw them away in your box. They're not available anymore in the catalog, but I do believe if you call Stamping Up, you can actually still buy them. I think that that is what I remember. Um, they're great when you have to score a lot of things to mark your places. All right, now on the short side, we're going to do one and a half, two and a half, four, and five. Now, don't feel rushed like you have to write that down and like I went super fast because it's over there on that project sheet on my blog that you can save. All right, we're gonna stamp the little dots. These are the little dots, just in Daffodil Delight all over, just to kind of make it have some interest so it's not just a boring yellow box. 
This stamp set has 15 stamps in it. That's quite a bit. And I like when they have these little, I don't know, I call them little doodad, doodad stamps that are just kind of for, for uh, texture and, and a little extra something something. All right, so we're gonna cut up these little um, score marks right here all the way up to that, that one that we did at one inch. And we're gonna cut this one off right there. Now, I'm just gonna cut this one at an angle, just a little bit. All right, so now let's burnish those score lines. I'm reading your comments. Connie is saying, yes, you can call Stamping Up to get those little score markers. Good. All right, so I put adhesive on that long tab there, and I just folded it over, and we made a box. And now I'm going to fold these two in. I'm going to put adhesive here and fold, closed. And then the same thing over here and close. Now let's get one of those little snacks. Put it in there. Like that. And we're going to use this is the 1 8 inch handheld punch. And I'm going to take some of my Daftil Delight ribbon. You know, I have my jacket on because I was so cold. And every time I turn this video camera on, I start getting hot and sweaty. You guys are making me nervous, I think. <laughs> I don't know what it is. All right. Put it through both of those holes. Let's cut some of that off. This is the Daftil Delight double stitched ribbon. I'm just going to do it like that. And tie that closed. And there is your box. Easy peasy. All right, now let's do the butterfly. All right, the jacket is coming off. I may even have to go turn that fan off. I think it's because I turn all these lights on. All right, now I'm going to use my stamp apparatus, and I can already see that it's dirty. For this stamp, um, as you guys know, the stamp apparatus isn't available yet, but it's coming June 1st, and it is great when you are needing to line up several stamps. This is actually three-step stamping that we're going to do on this butterfly right here. So let me get my Whisper White, and I'm going to just put it up in the corner like that. Um, photopolymer stamps a lot of times are sticky and they'll pull the white paper or pull your paper up and if that happens if your paper is in the corner then it won't matter you can just slide it back over to where it needs to be all right so I'm gonna do all my stamping in marina mist all right so there's that one now I can take the plate off I had these lined up earlier so that's why they're already in place I'm going to have to do the other one in just a second, so I'll show you how to line them up. Marina missed again. Stamp that down. Now I'm going to take it and turn it around like this, and I'm going to use the back side. Now it looks like I had a little boo-boo there, but I think because we're going to, we're going to um, cut it out, it won't matter. Goodness. All right, this feels kind of like it's not very sticky. So I can lay it there to see exactly where I want it. Push it down. See, that one is pretty sticky. Put that back. Now I'm going to stamp this on a piece of extra paper because I want it to be light. The, we're gonna do Marina Mist again, but I want it to be a light Marina Mist. So I'm gonna stamp just on a scratch piece of paper. And then I'm going to go back down and stamp right where we need it. And there we have it. Beautiful. Now we're going to use this again in a minute. So let me just move this guy over. All right. Now let's do the little part in the middle. Hey, that is bothering me. But we're going to pretend like it's not there we're gonna die cut it and I think it'll be okay. So there's the little body in the middle, so pretty. All right, let's move all this out of the way and bring the big shot over. 
Now I had a moment of complete panic yesterday when I saw that the butterfly thinlets were on, ha, had been discontinued. They're sold out because they're on um, they're on the retirement list. That means once they're gone, they're gone. But then I realized it wasn't this butterfly. We have two, strangely, it seems like they should be together, but two different sets of butterfly framelits. And this one goes with the one I'm gonna cut in just a second. And it's called, they're called the butterfly thinlets, right? Let me make sure I'm telling you right. Nope, these are the bold butterfly thinlets. It's the butterfly thinlets that have sold out. One's bold and one's not bold, but luckily the one we're using is bold and it's not sold out yet. At any moment, guys, at any moment, it could be sold out. All right, now I'm gonna take some vellum. This is the one that comes with it, this little guy. And I'm gonna put it on here, and I actually probably should use my precision plate to cut this, but I'm just gonna run it through a couple of times because I don't have my precision plate here, and let's see. Oh yeah, beautiful. I find that vellum cuts really well. And I don't have my dye brush either, so let's do it old school. We're just gonna poke them out. The dye brush is so much better when you have it in your within your arm's reach to poke all these things out. Way, just way faster. All right. So let's pull it out carefully because vellum rips, I think, easier than regular cardstock. All right, very good. Good. Yes, I love the Stamparatus too, Kathy. Um, how many of you have the Stamparatus? It was a pre-order um, in December, November, and no, I guess it was December, maybe November. And then they, because it's brand new, and they just couldn't make enough to get it in the catalog or to get it to open to everybody. All right, well, we're, that's all we're gonna do for that. So anyways, it'll be available for everybody in the new catalog on June 1st. All right, now here's the vellum and I'm sticking it right in the middle like that. So it kind of gives just a little more depth to it, but it's not crazy, you know, it's not like it's a whole bunch of, a whole nother butterfly. Oh, Marina Mist, I forgot to mention, is a retiring color. I like Marina Mist. I'm not a fan of the Subtles colors, but I do really like Marina Mist. And doesn't it look nice with daffodil? All right, so now the last thing is the sentiment. And this is gonna be a little tricky. Let's see, oh, I don't think I pulled it out, did I? What did I use? Just for you, here it is, just for you. And I curved it just a little so that it would fit in the duet, duet banner punch. So let's see if I can do that again. The thing that I did first was I punched one of these like that. That way I could see on my block how I needed it to go. And it feels like it's not very sticky. So hopefully, can you guys see what I'm doing? There, there may be a better way to do this, but this is how I do it. So I have just the blank there, the negative. And I'm gonna put this on the block and kind of make sure it's within that curve. All right, I think we got it. Hopefully it doesn't pop off because it's not very sticky right now for some reason. Overuse. All right, Marina Mist. Right there. Oh, it looks good. I think we might have done it. And I'm going to use this bottom one right here. And I think I might have done it the other way. <laughs> Last time I did it curved up. Well, this time we're doing it curved down. All right. Last but not least, let's put that on here, right in the center. Ta-da! Here's the difference, curved up, curved down. Ah, uh, curved up is probably better. It looks more like a smile, doesn't it? All right, project number one is done. I hope you guys like it. I'm always looking for treats, you know, to, to use in our projects, and I saw those. There's also um, strawberry flavored. And I have a box of strawberry flavored ones sitting over there. So maybe we'll see those in a few weeks too. I think it's funny that they're for Mother's Day. I'm not sure my mother would appreciate a box of little Debbie snacks for Mother's Day, but <laughs> whatever. All right, so there you go. I hope you guys like it. Remember, the PDF is over there on my blog. 
um, if you need those measurements. Okay, good grief, I have got stuff everywhere. I try not to do that, I try to keep it organized. All right, now the project, the next project, I kind of was trying to think outside the box. Here's the card. You don't see any butterflies, right? But when you open it, there's some butterflies. It's like a pop-up card. Isn't that so cute? I think it's pretty cute. Okay, so let's bring the Stamparatus back over. Now, we're using another retired color, Tempting Turquoise, which I think I now have used three weeks in a row. I love it. I can't get enough of it. I'm sad it's leaving. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna need to stamp this butterfly four times, and that's a great time to use this Stamparatus, and we don't need this big guy, so I'm gonna move him out of the way. Um, when you are doing, like, mass production, it's a good time to do um, your Stamparatus. So we're gonna do four of these, and I'm gonna stamp this first part. Can you guys see, am I in the frame? We're gonna do this first part in Tempting Turquoise on Tempting Turquoise cardstock. When you're near the, the hinge, you need a little more pressure just because the plate is raised a little bit further. All right, there's one. Now, this is a unique um, attrib attribute of the Stamparatus that this place, plate can move down. They call it the hinge step. So if we moved it down one, we would be overlapping, so that's not good. So we're gonna actually move it down two. Eh, still not good, so we gotta move it down three, okay? So you can do the hinge step, you just gotta make sure that you step it down enough times. And that you have not gotten ink all over your plate. Oh, oh, wait. Let me move this guy out of the way. All right like that, and then I'll turn this over. I'm actually only gonna do it three times because I actually have them pre-done. But I just wanna show you guys how you can just continue to just stamp and stamp and stamp. Anyways, you'll need four of them. All right, so let's take that off. We're gonna bring this one back over. And basic black. I think I told you guys in the new catalog, our basic black stamp pad is gone. There's no more basic black archival ink. There's going to be um, memento black and stays on black. So, which is fine. They both are wonderful inks. Um, it's just confusing, I think, when you look and you're like, where's the black ink pad? Um, so just an FYI. They had some formula issues with that black. They've had, continued to have some issues with it not drying on our Whisper White. So I think they just were like, ah, we're just done. We'll use inks that we already have that we know work well. Okay, so you would do that four times. And then you would take your bold butterfly framelit and cut all of them out, right? I know, Judy, that's funny. Yeah, that's me, six inch craft square. Yeah, I know, me too. And ta-da, you have four beautiful butterflies, just like that. All right, now we're gonna fold them in half and we are going to adhere them back to back. I did this ahead of time so you guys wouldn't have to watch me cut all four butterflies out. And you could, if you want to get precise, you could get your scoring tool out and score these right in half, but I'm just going to do it quickly. All right, so let's put adhesive here and line the wings up. By the way, the UPS man is due to, due to arrive any minute now. You guys know he's like my, he's the star of the show, he and the dogs. Um, so just to be prepared for some schnauzer barking if he shows up. All right, so see how I'm doing this? I'm creating them back to back. And they're actually gonna pull a little bit like that. So 
So you really only need to put adhesive there on the ends. All right, so we're gonna save that to the end. Let's do the rest of the, the front of the card first. So let's move these over. Um, the paper that I'm using, you can see it is that beautiful um, Petal Passion DSP that's in the Occasions catalog and every piece is black and white. So every piece will work. I have several here. Um, let's do this one. One really fun thing that I did, I don't know where I saw this recently and it it's not new. I just feel like I didn't know about this. <laughs> Flicking the ink from your marker is super easy when you use the inside of your lid like this. And so now, since I saw this, and I can't remember where I saw it, I have been flicking ink on every project I have. <laughs> it's like a new trick. See that? It just adds a little more pizzazz to your paper. Isn't that neat? So easy. Why didn't I ever see that before? I don't know, we used to have a tool that you hooked onto the end and you spritzed it and it was hard. That is super easy. All right, so you're going to put that on a basic black mat and on the Tempting Turquoise card base. And then we've got this white strip right here and we're going to stamp the sentiment that says, the little moments with you matter a lot to me. I love these sentiments. I don't know who writes these, but they're smart, clever. All right, we're gonna put that right there. All right, now we need a frame. And to make a frame, we're gonna take this stitched square, which is, I believe, the second largest. Mm, maybe it's, no, maybe it's the third. Either way, guys, we're gonna make a frame. <laughs> Did I write it on the sheets? No, I didn't. Well, I can measure it for you guys if you need to know. But then you're gonna get a layering square, one of our square framelits, and put it right in the middle. Oh, I did it. Look, I put my Big Shot handle on the back. I don't know why I always do that. All right. Move that out of the way, pop these out. I have been making so many frames lately. I like frames around sentiments and shapes. I don't know, I like it. All right, right there. And you know what, we need many dimensionals. Uh-oh, many dimensionals. I've got them right here. Because we want this popped up. So, a many dimensional there, a many dimensional there, and you could do all four corners, but for the sake of the video, I'm gonna do just two. All right, right around the sentiment, beautiful. All right, now let's, before we move back onto the inside, let's take some basic black Baker's Twine. Retiring, retiring alert. Boo. Baker's black, basic black Baker's twine pretty much doesn't leave my desk. It's out all the time because I use it all the time. So that's sad. Oh, you know what? I need to tell you guys something. We speaking of the Stamparatus, which I should have told you while I was using the Stamparatus. Um, I am. I have been asked by Stamping Up to participate in a blog hop um, on Thursday next, or maybe it's Friday next week. Um, so check it out. It's going to be, I believe there's 20 of us who have been asked and we're all going to be showcasing different ways to use the Stamparatus. And I'm so excited. I'm kind of nervous. It's kind of a big deal. So I hope you guys will come check it out. Okay, so now let's do the inside. Before we put those butterflies there, let's stamp a little more, a few little doodads here on the inside for interest. This is um, the smaller butterfly in the stamp set. It has the big one and the small one. And it's just one of the, the layers. I kind of liked that. And then I think we did the, the round doodads that we used earlier. And, uh-oh, it's dirty, but I took care of it. Don't ask how I did it. You don't want to know. I'm wearing black pants. I've told you guys about black yoga pants, right? Anyways, 
let's close all of that and let's put our butterflies in. Thank you, Laura. Yeah, it's exciting. Um, now, this is, we're gonna adhere these just like this, okay? Just like that. So let's put some adhesive. And again, just really, you only need it close to that. Well, let me do this the right way. All right, so kind of eyeball it so that that middle one is there, right in the middle of the, the fold, the crease. Come on, fast fuse. And then close and press and ta-da! <gasps> Fancy. Isn't that pretty? What a surprise. Like the card's very low key. And then you open it, you're like, oh my gosh. Yeah, the designer pants, Judy, you're right. We won't speak of what happens to the yoga pants. All right, there you go, project number two. Looks good, look at that. It looks so different with the different DSPs. Hmm, I think I still like that one better. I don't know. But you could, that's a great way to use up that, that um, designer series paper. Even if you didn't put the butterflies inside, that's still a pretty simple card. Okay, are you guys ready for brush-o? I'm so nervous. Let me tell you about brush-o while I'm cleaning up my space. Let me put it here so you can all look at it. Here's my brush-o that I could not wait to order. I was probably more excited about brush-o than anything else in the occasions catalog. And it came and we have had a rough go, me and Brusho. I don't know why I cannot, um, I don't feel like I can, ma I have mastered Brusho very well, um, but I will tell you that Sarah Fleming, I don't know if she's watching today, she did a really great presentation on Brusho um, at the event that Kay Cogbill and I did. And so, because I had played with Brusho several times and I was like, I can't do this, it's a mess, I can't do it. And I watched her and I realized I was doing a lot of things wrong. So I came home and played with it. Um, and I actually had played with it a little bit. Let me show you before I left. And I made this. This was a tag that I had made for Kay for a gift I gave her. And here's the brush -o. I had been making backgrounds and just leaving them like, oh, yay, Sarah. Oh, no, now I'm nervous. Sarah is going to watch. Um, Sarah's the brush -o queen, you guys. Sarah Fleming, she's really good. So anyways, I had been making just brush out backgrounds and then just like throwing them to the side and there was a big pile of them and I just really didn't know what to do with them. So I watched Sarah and I was like, okay, you, you can do this. It's not that hard. And so I was bound and determined. So this is what we're doing today. Now I've got a tip for you. Um, brush out goes everywhere. It's these little tiny like micro crystals of watercolor and they go everywhere. Oh guys, my mom's watching too. Janice McCarty, she's watching. Hi mom. She's an artist too. So now the pressure is really on. <laughs> okay, so here's a tip. Press and seal. We'll cover your surface um, and really protect it from these flying crystals that go over everywhere because they go everywhere. And I also bought um, some gloves to wear, um, just some disposable gloves when I'm really getting into it because it gets all over your hands. Um, so just know that and make sure you wear your black yoga pants when you're doing it so it won't matter. So anyway, press and seal is a great way. You can just cover up your workspace. And this press and seal is weird. It has these weird designs on it. I don't know. Um, so what we're going to do is, hmm, let me see, do I want to show you? No, I'm, we're going to do it first and then I'm going to show you. Okay, so I really like to use a shimmer card stock. Mom, oh, you guys, my mom is watching. It's very nerve wracking. So I like to use a shimmer white card stock. Um, I think it does a better job of not super absorbing in the... Um, the liquid that we're going to put on it and so i use the they've they've um recommended it really uh thick whisper white shimmer white and watercolor so, your fancy wrap you're funny emery so but i find that i like shimmer and i think it's because it's kind of glittery um, when you're done so i like to just cut a piece i've just been cutting it into quarters and uh then taping it down to some random um chipboard that you have. I save all the chipboards that come in our paper. And then old washi tape. This is 
pretty much the only thing I ever use washi tape for these days. I don't know why, I just <laughs> never use washi tape. All right, so in my research, I found that you could use starch. So this is one of the things that I was playing around with, and I like the way starch looks with a brush -o. and I don't know why I like it better than water. I feel like I have more control over it because it's thicker, but it also kind of makes it um, shinier than water, if that makes sense. Okay, so we're gonna use the orange, which is gamboge, and the blue, I don't even know how to say that, Prussian blue, and the brilliant red. Those are the three colors we're gonna use. Actually, not the blue, I take that back. Yellow, yellow, gamboge, and red. Um, so I, you can do this two ways. You can spray first with a starch, or you can do it dry. So we're gonna do it dry first. Um, you poke a hole in yours, and I have several holes in mine, um, so that it comes out slightly less than, than it would if you just opened it, because again, it's like these tiny micro crystals that fly everywhere. And I'm using all three colors because I want to kind of create um, kind of a mixed color. And this is starch straight from my ironing board. That This is pretty much the only time I use it. All right, so now you can see what's happening. All right, so I got it wet. Now I'm gonna add some more in. And something that Sarah taught me was that don't use too much. So Sarah's probably gonna say I'm using too much. But that's pretty much how I do everything. All right, a little bit more, and it's just gonna kind of blend together. And then I just pick it up and kind of run it around. See how it's thick? I feel like um, with the water, it runs too quickly. Look at that, isn't that gorgeous? Wow, this is probably the prettiest one I've done. Okay, now you could leave it like that, but I thought this other technique that I saw was really, really cool. Here's the cling wrap that I hate. I can't stand this stuff because it's so hard to get out, but it's great for this project. And I tried it also with a press and seal, and it was a totally different look. So you're gonna get just get a big thing of press and seal. This is why I hate it, because this is what it does, right? But that's okay, because that's what we want it to do. We want it to kind of crinkle all up, and then we want all those wrinkles, and then we're just gonna set it down in here and smush it down, like that. And all those little wrinkles are gonna leave that texture in there. So the hardest part is that now you gotta sit and let it dry and it takes a while. When it's sunny here, I put it just outside and it's pretty quick, but today it's not so sunny. But because this is a live video, we can't just sit here and wait, right? So I've done some ahead of time and I have no idea what they're gonna look like. But let's see, oh, very fancy. Isn't that so cool? So neat. Okay, I have another one. Let's see what that one looks like. This one looks like um, I mix the colors a little bit. Oh, it's already off. I mix the colors a little bit more. You can see the difference. Actually, I think I kind of stirred some of it around with my finger too to get them to mix, but isn't that pretty? Now here's some I did using the press and seal on top. A little bit different, but not too different. Oh, I'm already got it on my hands. Look at that one. Mm. Okay, so now we've got some things to work with, right? Fun. You can you could really just kind of get lost in doing that all day long because um, it's a lot of fun. All right, let me get the press and seal out of here. Oh, look, I already got it on my card. I'm telling you guys, it's a mess. Okay, so I told you originally, here's the card, and I use the other set of butterfly framelits, which look like this, but they are now sold out and gone. So frantically last night, I'm thinking, what are we gonna do? Well, we're gonna do what I did on the, the tags for K. We're gonna use the one and three eight scalp circle, and we're gonna make some flowers. And, you know, wherever you punch, your flowers are gonna look a little bit different. I'm gonna try to keep my flowers orangey. Ooh, so pretty. And then take your half inch circle punch for the middle of those flowers. So pretty. Yeah, I'm, I'm, Brusho and I are friends now. After, after messing with this, I, I like it. Here's a couple of other ones that I did. You can see I've punched them out. Here's green and blues. Again with the saran wrap. Pretty, right? 
All right, so let's stick these on with my glue dots. And then the card goes together really, really quickly. And I actually used a new color um, that's coming out called Grapefruit Grove on this card. And I'll show you in just a second. All right, so did I not cut Whisper White? I did not cut Whisper White, but luckily I have a drawer full of Whisper White right here. Hmm. Do I have one the right size? Let's see, we may have to trim it. Yeah, we're gonna have to trim it. All right, hold please. Just real quick, I promise. I don't know if this is gonna be the right size or not, but we're going with it. All right, let's see. We're gonna stamp, a, here's some more doodads from the stamp set. Some little dots. Hi, everybody. I'm seeing you say hello. All right, I'm gonna stamp these dots going across. I really need some grid paper today. I haven't been using it. I'm getting stuff all over my work surface that I did not cover. All right, so that is in um, Melon Mambo. Now let's arrange these cute little flowers with the dimensionals. This one accidentally, like you can see there's a white edge on that. So we will just overlap one of these other flowers like that. So we made it work even though we don't have the butterflies or that butterfly. The bold butterflies are still available last I checked. But like I said, if you like them and you don't have them, make sure you get them quickly. Cute. All right, last thing is the sentiment on basic black or with basic black. Oh, there's a little fuzz there. And I think this time I'm gonna put it over here. Oh yeah, I like it better. You are so kind. All right, let's put it together and we are done. Once you, you know, once you, get all these made you can have them there in a stack and just use them when you need stuff so here's that new color look at that man I, I guessed at the trimming that white down and it is absolutely perfect this is grapefruit grove it's a kind of um I don't know it's a more where is this mango I may be telling you guys wrong hmm. oh I think it's grapefruit we have so many new colors it's going to take me a while to get used to them this little piece here but like I was saying once you you know if you take some time and just make a bunch of these then you can keep them and use them for different backgrounds and different punches and different dies which is what I kind of did I kind of had it laying there for a while and then I made those flowers for Kay's tag all right so these are the tutti fruity sequence adhesive back sequence in orange whoops the yellow ones would go well too, or the pink ones. All right, we are done. I survived Brusho on live Facebook. Oh, phew, it's scary, y'all. All right, what do you guys think? Look, cute, oh, it's cute. Two different, the butterflies and the flowers. Fun. All right, so let's review. We made the cards. We made um, the fancy fold card. Is it mango crystal? I don't know. I could have told you guys wrong. I don't know. All right, and there are the boxes. I hope you guys like them. Um, I don't know why I have this random card base in here. I hope you guys like these projects. Remember the project sheets are over on my blog. The post hopefully went up at the same time that I went live. You can download them, print them, and save them. That way you'll have the measurements and the product information. And don't forget to enter for the um, giveaways and share the video for a chance to win some ribbon. And last but not least, don't forget to get your orders in by Monday night if you want the make and takes. And if your order is $50, anytime between now and April 30th, I'm gonna send you an email and let you choose something for free for my giant celebration leftovers, all of my extras. All right, you guys, have a great weekend. Thank you so much for joining me. And I, oh, next week will be Thursday. 
I forgot to tell you guys that next weekend, next week will be Facebook Thursday. My kids are off on Friday. So I will be live on Thursday at two o'clock. All right, guys, have a great weekend. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you next week. Bye.